music is always so catchy. Hello and welcome to Nine on the Positive Side. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thank you so much for joining us. For many children, they'll forget a lot of toys they get this Christmas, but they will not forget the memories made during the holiday season. Chad Tucker introduces us to one grandmother who is making memories by making wreaths with her grandchildren. Just to make sure that you bind that part in and then we'll add another piece. Decking the halls. Good. And now pinch it at the top. With the Morgans. Big. Not too, too big because of the size of the wreath. Sarah Morgan, a longtime art teacher, is working with her favorite students. These two and twist them. Her grandchildren. Teaching the kids has been wonderful. They're the light of my life. Yeah, a light that has caught on to her love of wreath here, making. And every year they get better and better. Sarah yeah. first taught herself how to bring the greenery together about 20 years ago as a gift for fellow teachers. And we ended up teaching anybody who wanted to come to pinch that in. A gift that is now being passed down. Because it's always fun to like fit it together. It's kind of like a puzzle. One of my old art teachers, she really, really, really liked it. So just make sure whatever you do. That she uses a variety of evergreens mostly gathered from the yard, like magnolia leaves. Using your hands and making something beautiful that people can enjoy is just wonderful. Real berries help add that seasonal color. And all you have to do is fluff it out. But these aren't the only colors that she brings together. She's also a painter. That was really the beginning of it. But it's not the art or the wreaths that bring her the most right, joy. Go around the whole thing first. It's the feelings that these moments create that she knows her grandkids will never forget. I love to share the feeling of accomplishment and of pure joy with the kids. Okay, so take the two pieces of wire. Creating moments in the season. I think it just runs in the family. The ultimate Christmas gift. Just the warmth that we share. In Winston-Salem. The hugs. Look at Roy's folks. The talking together. Chad Tucker. I hope they'll remember that. Fox 8 News. It just does my heart good to do things with them. You still have to make, you have to make the Eastern North Carolina Toys for Tots warehouse is packed full with boxes of toys for children of all ages. Volunteers are working in Greenville to coordinate with children's agencies in 29 counties. They're working to make sure no child is left without a gift this Christmas. Around 10,000 toys are in the warehouse this year, and they're already giving some of those toys out. A lot of preparation and organization goes into this to make sure each toy winds up in the right place. Zero to 11 months, one to two, three to five, six to eight, nine to 12. And they do it by gender. And then the toys are sorted that way. Some of them very gender neutral, like games. Um, and some of them are gender specific. And we break them down that way in boxes and we label them and they go back to the agencies that way. This year, around 28,000 children have been accounted for through this program. There are still opportunities for volunteers to get involved with Toys for Tots. Visit our online originals tab on our website, WNCT.com, to learn more and check out our inside look at the Toys for Tots Warehouse 2 over there. Collecting toys for families in need all across eastern North Carolina. That was the goal of the 35th annual Operation Santa Claus in Greenville. The event started in the Pitt County Fire and Rescue Department more than three years ago, and it continues to expand its impact. The drive brings thousands of toys for local families, and what sets it apart from any other drive is that each toy raised will stay in Pitt County. Oh my gosh, it's one of the most exhilarating experiences you can ever have. It's just, it brings so much joy to, to myself and, you know, every, anyone involved uh, when you're able to pack up a bag for a child and deliver it to a parent. Just the, the relief uh, that they, the parents feel, you can feel it with them, uh, that they know that Christmas has been provided for and they don't have to worry about it. 
More than $46,000 raised at the event will be used to buy Christmas gifts and toys for local families through the Salvation Army. The toys will be given out on December 15th. Operation Santa Claus will continue to collect donations for underprivileged children across Pitt County through drives and events until then. If you want to learn more about the toy drive or want to donate, we have your information over on our website. It's officially Christmas in McCannonville. Over the weekend, the small Gaston County town has transformed into Christmas Town, USA. During the holiday season, the town flips the switch and becomes a nationally known holiday destination. As John Lee shows us, the annual event brings back fond memories for so many people. After nearly seven decades, it's ballooned into a tradition full of holiday and community spirit in McCaddenville. The work and anticipation begins long before the lighting ceremony. To me, it's home. Susan Bell was born in 1956, the year McCaddenville began earning its distinction as Christmas Town, USA. It's a Christmas tradition that is wonderful and I love it. The light spectacle will draw some half a million people this year, especially on the weekends. It might seem like everybody and their mother is here. Wait, is that Cousin Eddie? Aside from the Griswold level of enthusiasm as seen in Christmas Vacation, the display boosts downtown businesses. Every December, the owner of Revolver Records says, at last, when the lights come on. Wham! The McAddenville lights are like a fire starter for commerce. Not bad. Right until about probably 9, 10 o'clock at night, people walking by, drinking cocoa, stopping in and checking out uh, some of their favorite artists. Two Scoops Creamery is breaking out flavors like peppermint crunch to ring in the season. I think it's going to be slammed. Uh, from everything I'm hearing from the community, everyone, everyone that lives here says it's just going to be traffic nonstop. The endless array of lights inspires megawatt smiles, and many feel the more the merrier. Coming here and seeing how every house gets involved with the lights is incredible. And that was John Lee reporting the lights will turn on at 530 each night and they will turn off at 10 because of the heavy weekend traffic. Town officials suggest visitors come Monday through Thursday to see the displays. And to see when your town or city is having their parade, we have you covered. You can find an article over on WNCT. Coming up, though, prom season is almost here, which means dress shopping season is in full swing. Find out how one local boutique is helping out by giving away free dresses. We brought you the story of the New Bern Junior League's prom boutique in January. The group held their third annual boutique, giving away free dresses to high school students who might otherwise not be able to afford them. But if the Junior League wants to put on a prom boutique next year, they need your help. Now to your side, Sarah Gray Barr has this story. I'm standing inside Blue Magnolia, one of the drop-off locations for New Bern's Junior League prom boutique. I talked to the group earlier today. Last year, they say they collected 300 dresses, and this year, they want to double that. The Junior League of Greater New Bern's Prom Boutique is less than two months away, so the group is collecting dresses now. They want gently used dresses that can mean gowns, cocktail dresses, or other formal wear. It's not just the dress, though. The league is taking jewelry, shoes, and other accessories as well everything that's needed for a picture-perfect prom. We were all once young girls going to prom too, and we know how important it is to, you know, find the right dress and feel beautiful and not, for parents not to have to stress about how they're going to be able to do that. Dress drop-off locations include Blue Magnolia, Jenna's Just In Boutique, and Sassy Fashions, and lots more. Last year, around 100 high school students danced out of the boutique and into prom in free donated dresses. The Junior League says this time they want to make it 200. Again, there are three locations to donate to. We'll have them listed on our website at WNCT.com. The deadline to donate is December 15th. In New Bern, Sarah Gray Bar, nine on your side. And if you're looking for more good news, you can go to WNCT.com. There you'll find these stories and more under the nine on the positive side tab. You can find that under features. We also have all of our nine on the positive side episodes there for you to watch again if you need more good news in your life. 
free Christmas trees for our nation's heroes. Next on nine on the positive side, a look at two efforts in Fort Liberty and Camp Lejeune giving back to our servicemen and women. The Christmas Spirit Foundation and FedEx are teaming up to make the holidays a little brighter for our service members. Now to your sides, Claire Curry brings us more from Camp Lejeune for their Trees for Troops giveaway. Marines and sailors have been lined up for hours, eager to get their homes spruced up for the holidays with a free Christmas tree. Come on! It's usually a long line. Um, I didn't expect to be first in line. Um, I waited for almost like three hours. Around 750 trees coming from all across the country was well worth the wait for many. Yep, there we go. If you're looking at getting anything beyond eight foot higher, I mean, I know people who are paying up to $200 for a live Christmas tree. If it's a difference between um, diapers, formula, and a live Christmas tree, you know, maybe we can help out just a little bit. All tied with personalized notes showing thanks to our service members. Oh, look at that. Merry Christmas, we are so thankful. Bringing families closer together during the holidays. Our tradition is to set it up as soon as we get it home. The kids help, they love to decorate it. We have the kids pick out an ornament every year and then they put it wherever they want in the tree and then they pick out the ones that they have previous, that they have gotten in the previous years as well. Especially for those who might be away in the future. He's gonna go in training for the next eight months, starting in January, so he'll be gone, he'll be missed. Because it's the season for spending time with one another. For me, really, is the togetherness of getting the family together. Over the last 18 years, over 300,000 trees have been given out through the program. At Camp Lejeune, Claire Curry, 9 on your side. And in the spirit of giving, Christmas trees were also given out at Fort Liberty last week. This year, 600 trees have been donated through the Trees for Troops program for active duty service members and their families. Trues, troops pick them up on a first come first serve basis. Well, meaningful just because it's our, our first Christmas together as a family, so it's... It's fun, it's really meaningful, and it's really special, especially because, well, you know, the Army has been providing for a lot for us, so it's like, wow, like, they're still giving us a lot. Just a, a bright spot at Christmas in our house. Fort Liberty also named its Family of the Year, who received the first tree giving out during a ceremony on base. It was also the 300,000th tree given out by troops, trees for our troops. Over in Florida, Florida Power and Light and the Florida National Guard join forces to deliver a surprising home makeover to one veteran. Volunteers from both groups work to transform a home into an energy efficient winter wonderland adorned with thousands of LED lights and solar powered decor. Liz Byro has this story. Oh my God. In her uniform, Pamela Johnson pulled up to her house turned winter wonderland. Her five year old son, Casey, just as shocked. My heart is like so warm right now. This is incredible. Florida Power and Light Elves worked all day to make this happen. Lights, candy canes, and inflatable Santa in uniform, of course. A lot of people were nominated in Southwest Florida. FPL says Pamela's name bubbled to the top. Well, she just really stood out as a, a superhero that we need to recognize. Army Staff Sergeant Pamela Johnson is an active member of the Florida National Guard. When she's not working, she's the primary caregiver for her son, Casey, who has faced some medical challenges this year. They also got Casey some gifts. He really likes dinosaurs. And for Pamela, a $1,000 gift card to Home Depot. I love how special it was for him. I don't quite know what to do yet with the gift card. That's just... That's a huge gift. Liz Byro, Wink News. A community in Arkansas is joining forces to celebrate the life of a 100-year-old hometown World War II veteran. Family and friends gathered to celebrate the World War II veteran's birthday, Cornelius Burrow. He is 100 years old. However, many veterans came out to wish him a happy birthday as he was presented an American flag for his service. Burrow says he has his family to thank for making this milestone happen. We raised a good family. I've been dependent on the young folks to keep me going. 
I've got it so far. Happy birthday, and Burrow says he is looking forward to his next birthday when he turns 101. If you have a story idea for us, you can send it on over to us. We want to hear about the good things happening where you live. Just email newsdesk at WNCT.com. That email is right there on your screen. It's newsdesk at WNCT.com. You could also reach out to me on social media with your story ideas. A special viewer is tuning into one news station for the music. We'll explain next on nine on the positive side. A dog in Colorado has a special talent most dogs might not have, and what she's singing along with might even shock you. Lindsay Gruy reports. Every morning at 4.30, the national anthem plays. And every morning at 4.30, little Peanut here is singing right along with it. Oh, say can you see. <laughs> By the dawn's early light. <laughs> She will wake us up at 4.30 in the morning singing. And she sings very loud. <laughs> Pina is an adorable Yorkie and Shih Tzu mix. Rebecca got her as a puppy one year ago. Then three months ago, Pina announced she had a secret talent. She sleeps with me at night and my TV just stays on the news. And I got woke up to her howling at 4.30 in the morning. And I didn't know why. <laughs> but I like replayed it back to her and then she started howling again. Rebecca tells me Peanut loves to sing, but only to the national anthem. We'll play anything and she <laughs> won't do nothing. It's only that song. What so proudly she howled. Does she do this every morning? Yes, if you leave the TV on or if it's anywhere playing in the house, she'll sing it. In a way, it's kind of fitting that she only sings to the national anthem. She was born on the 4th of July, so it just, it just makes sense. It is a strange wake up call, but Rebecca tells me that her family wouldn't have it any other way. We all just love it. It's just, now it's part of her personality. Reporting from Woodland Park, I'm Lindsay Gruy, KKTV 11 News. Go Peanut Go! And all month long, WNCT is celebrating 70 years on the air in Eastern North Carolina. Yeah, 70 years on the air in Eastern North Carolina. Now, throughout the month, we'll feature stories with highlights from the past seven decades during our evening newscast. And on Friday, December 22nd, it will be here before we know it. That's Friday, December 22nd. You can join us for our 70th anniversary special. And that 70th anniversary special will be starting at seven o'clock. And thank you so much for joining us for nine on the positive side this weekend. Here's a look at Santa's cabin. And this is an Airbnb in Finland called Santa's cabin. Have a great weekend everyone. We will see you next time on nine on the positive side. Thanks so much for watching.